Good SEC Media Days in Dallas, Texas, and pleased to be joined by Vanderbilt, former Vanderbilt quarterback and SEC Network analyst Jordan Rogers. Jordan, great to see you. Man, just watching you this week, it feels like you're like a lot of us. When this week gets started, you get a little fired up, don't you? Oh, no doubt. I'm just excited. Like, look, like we can stop pretending that Texas and Oklahoma are some second-tier program like in the SEC. Like, they're a part of us now. We've always known they're two of the best programs in the entire country. We were just too ashamed to admit that. Now we can now that they're in the SEC. We with all the expansion of the playoffs, the conferences, like I don't think there's a better time in college football, so I'm, I'm pumped. And with the playoff going to 12 teams, I mean, how many teams in this conference go into this season thinking we can make that playoff this year? I think there's six or seven teams that have that thought process, like, and and deservedly so have that thought process. Everybody should be thinking they can get into the 12, right? But there's at least seven teams that I'm like, they legit have a chance to win nine or ten games, and depending on how the schedule breaks out, the strength the schedule breaks out, have a legitimate opportunity to get in the playoffs. And like we know, and I, I can't, did the Cotton Bowl a couple years ago when Oklahoma lost their first two, and then they went on a run of ten in a row. And I thought, you know what, this is why we need a playoff, because at the end of the year, they were one of the best teams in the entire country, but with a new starter, Spencer Rattler losing his first two games, like they just got off to a bad start. And if it was the four teams, they'd never have a chance. But now a team like that that can get better throughout the season, be hot at the right moment, can really make a run. One of those teams is in our backyard, the Ole Miss Rebels. And you love their quarterback. And you, and you think he's got a great chance, or a chance at least, to, to be a Heisman Trophy winner this year. He's my Heisman favorite, and I don't think it's really close. And that's not disrespect to Carson Beck. I think he's the best quarterback uh, in the country. I have Dart at two. Um, but it, they don't need him the same way that Ole Miss needs Jackson Dart. And I think the most interesting thing is being there for their – it wasn't a spring game. It was more of a spring event um, that I was there for. Uh, Charlie Weiss Jr., their off coordinator, just mentioned, look, that we're – we're a system that is usually a run first, despite the big plays downfield that we see through the air. Like this is a offense that needs to run the football effectively. He says, we're really going to be much different this year. We're going to be much more like that 2019 LSU team where we go five wide, spread it all over the field. Jackson Dart's going to be relied on heavy on his arm and his legs to really take this team to a national championship or at least to a college football playoff. Um, and I think he's got all the school skill set, the tools to do so. And with the pieces they added on defense, that's what really changes this team for me is now they have the bodies, the size, the length that Pete Golding needs to have that defense up to the caliber of the offense. We don't see many three-year starters at quarterback. No. Uh, and Jackson Dark comes in as a third-year starter. How, how, how much more comfortable does that make it for Lane Kiffin and for this offense to just be able to trust the guy and throw him out there? especially when you have an offense that goes so fast, like the quarterback needs to be able to understand everything and, and be, really be on the same wavelength as head coach. And they are. Not only do they play pickleball together like every single day, and I'm jealous. I'm a big pickleball guy now too. So it's pretty much what I ask Lane about every time I see him now? now. I know. It's, it's sad, right? <laughs> Uh, you know, the knee pads on and everything, like bodies just breaking apart. Um, but they are definitely on the same page, on the same, way, on the same wavelength, excuse me. And I, I think you're going to see a quarterback that took a huge jump from 2022 to 2023 in his downfield accuracy and protecting the football. I think he's going to take an, a, another jump this next year. The more I look at this conference, the more that I think it's a pretty good quarterback conference, isn't it? It's huge. I, I got, I'm getting ripped on Twitter right now because I left uh, Nico Yamaleava and Jackson Arnold off my top eight quarterback. So I'm like, well, who am I going to put in front of a Brady Cook who took his team to a, a huge season last year? Am I going to put in front of Garrett Nussmeyer who lit it up in a bowl game? And there's just so many good quarterbacks in kind of even that middle range. We always have the top tier quarterbacks, but we're eight, nine, ten deep of quarterbacks that are like, these dudes can legitimately play with anybody in the country. Another school in our backyard is your old school, Vanderbilt. My question about Vanderbilt is just what needs to happen for them to become relevant? I, I think they took the first step um, with changing coordinators, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Um, now, Clark Lee is never going to be allowed in Las Cruces, New Mexico ever again because he went there and he took their offensive coordinator, their former head coach, and their starting quarterback. So he, he got out of there like a bandit. Um, but what I love is it's going to bring a scheme that – is more running focus, which you have to do at Vandy. You're not going to have the athletes to really run by people on the outside and win with speed. So you need a run game that can be creative and, and really like steal you yards. And when I flip on that New Mexico State tape, I see a quarterback in Diego Pavia who is competing for the job now at Vandy, who's crafty, who's willing to get physical, willing to get downhill, and a really creative sc scheme that I think is going to allow them to, like I said, steal yards against teams that are bigger, faster, stronger than they are, which that's what we had to do when I was there. You know, we ended up winning nine games, but never once when we stepped on the field against the SEC team were we the most talented team. You just have to find a way to win. I think they're taking that first step to get there. Jordan, pleasure having you. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, enjoy the season. Appreciate it. Thanks.
Jordan Rogers joining us here at SEC Media Days in Dallas. Keep it here on Grind City Media all week for updates from SEC Media Days.